Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So just for, if you're joining us, you want to know, like, what is all this stuff that we're talking about? I have no clue. We're going to start there. I don't know about any of this, but I know I've been having conversations with you guys for a while saying that in the firearms industry, in the gun world, gun community, we need to start, um, you know, we, we need to start having ownership over our own ecosystem. I don't know if that's a good way. I don't know if you guys um, here on the panel uh, agree with me on that, but, w but we need to take control of things. And I think... Lately, with everything that's happening, uh, the, the results of the elections, um, social media platforms out there being activists and uh, deplatforming people and trying to control the message, all of that stuff that's going on, we really not need to start thinking about how do we communicate with each other, how do we uh, buy and sell things to each other, all those kinds of things around that. So that's why we're having this conversation today. That's the reason why Steve and Rob and, and Richard are here. Um, they're going to try to explain to me and you all <laughs> exactly where to start because I know it's a little daunting. So uh, welcome everyone out there. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Steve first. If you could just tell the folks out there who you are and uh, what do you do? Yeah, my name is Steve uh, Lovis. I uh, own and uh, operate uh, Rex Silentium. Uh, we are a suppressor manufacturer located here in Bozeman, Montana. Okay, very cool. And I think that uh, you've got some alternative ways of people being able to purchase stuff from you. Yes, and for some time now, we've we've used um, <clears throat> a, uh, I, I believe it's coin payments, uh, as a... Uh, another method of payment on our website and we've used it for i believe about five years now um so that um uh, uh, folks who are coming to make purchases from us can use a variety of uh different cryptocurrencies uh, not the least of which is bitcoin okay very cool and then now i'm going to go to rob of tusk rob if you could just explain to the folks out there who you are what you do uh, my name is Rob McNeely. I'm based in the Salt Lake City area. So, you know, high five to the Rocky Mountain West, right? Um, but uh, I am one of the original co-founders of a community-driven non-ICO cryptocurrency payments project that was tailored built for the gun industry. So much like Steve was just mentioning Bitcoin, we're kind of like Bitcoin that was designed for the gun retailers. All right, very cool. And I'm going to go to Flying Rich. If you could just tell the folks why you're here, um, you know, other than if people need lessons on how to crash your plane every oh, time you land. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. It's too late. Everybody's <laughs> just bringing it up. Uh, actually, I used to mine Bitcoin. So uh, I mined Bitcoin, and it's a sad story. Just like my plane crash, uh -oh. I lost all of my Bitcoin, Bitcoin with Mt. Gox. Oh, okay. All right. So, Ouch. yeah, you, you you know stuff the hard way, Rob. I think. Um, okay, so I, I guess we should start here with what should folks know if they're trying to, um, you know, if they're trying to get into this, right? People have heard horror stories like what Rob's mentioning. I mean, I'm sorry, what Rich is men mentioning. If someone's thinking about this, where should they start? What's the basics of what they should know? Um, about cryptocurrencies, for example. I don't know who wants to jump in there. Maybe Rob, if you want to... Rob, why don't you start? Yeah. Oh, they're going to throw me to the wolves in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fine. There's a lot in that question. Um, yeah, I know, I know. So, so I, I'm going to try to keep it at a high level, okay? Because mm -hmm. I think if we start getting nitty-gritty, we're going to lose a lot of people because mm -hmm. um, it is really a lot of information to swallow. But think of it this way. A lot of our payments now that people are comfortable with, whether it be credit cards or debit cards, or people are familiar with the demons like PayPal mm -hmm. and Venmo and Square and Stripe and Cash App, all those payments are basically digital transactions but they're denominated in dollars and they go through a bunch of activist banks that hate gun people. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so essentially cryptocurrency is another way to move value around, but the underlining or underlying unit of transaction is not a dollar. It okay. is a new type of currency. Um, 
And so ultimately, as we go and get further into, you know, creating and abstracting better on and off ramps, being able to get that cryptocurrency um, from dollars and back into dollars and out of dollars as those the getting those things are kind of complicated right now. It's a little harder than just, you know, using Venmo right now. Mm -hmm. um, but over time, the from the end user perspective, the transaction of value shouldn't be much different than using something like a Venmo or a PayPal or a Cash App over time. And and projects like Tusk and, and even on, you know, Bitcoin and some of these other cryptocurrency projects, they're working on making that process easier and it will get easier in time. But but from the end user perspective, it's just moving value around instead of using dollars. It's like using a different type of currency. I mean, for instance, if you were using a, a, a cash payment app that was denominated in you know Swiss francs, it's not dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can do the similar type of transaction with Tusk or Bitcoin. Okay. Um, and so folks out there might be asking themselves, why would we want to do this? Uh, by the way, shout out to Harry's Holsters that's a sponsor of the podcast here. I appreciate them doing that. And and that that brings up something. Like, I got banned for life from PayPal because I'm a gun guy. Right. You know? Um, and, Private account. Yeah, my, per personal yeah my, my personal account. And it wasn't like I didn't buy a gun or anything like that or sell a gun using PayPal. I just, there's a certain company that I might have just mentioned that sponsors this podcast. And because they they try to support us through PayPal, got banned. And I know it was that because uh, Lola, Lola said, okay, I'll, I'll create a PayPal and try to do this. She went through the whole process. Uh, immediately when uh, that, they try to make that payment, she got banned for life. And that's insane. Like, you know, we can't have a, a, a company come in that literally makes Kydex holsters and support us without getting banned. So if, if someone's wondering out there, and I know, Steve, you, you know, you, you make, you manufacture and sell suppressors. Did you come across the same thing when you decided to start using? Uh, yeah, I, I've been radioactive for, you know, five or six years, you know, mm -hmm. in the suppressor business. So, and I think anybody, uh, any, anyone you talk to who's in the suppressor business or even in the, the uh, NFA, you know, business is going to tell you the same thing. It's very hard to find, um, processors that won't gouge you uh into oblivion uh just to handle um you know the the credit card this antiquated credit card system oh okay so okay. yeah it's, it's very difficult and you can't even go near you know paypal or or any of these other ones just because of their weapons policy and of course the people writing and implementing and and, and ultimately deciding on that policy are as ignorant about firearms yeah. as you could be absolutely well and I'd like to piggyback on that. And and what then what you know Steve's talking about is the terms of service on these third party payment providers, these PPPs, um, prohibits lots of things like C B D, gambling, pornography typically, sex workers, and guns. Um, and this is not for legal reasons, but the excuse they say is because there's quote unquote higher fraud or higher risk with these type of industries. Mm -hmm. And so I, I always like to point that out. It's not because that guns are illegal. This is a pure policy decision made on the part of these activist banks that clearly do not support guns at all. So I like to throw that out there. That's not because guns are doing something wrong necessarily. It's just mm -hmm. because um, the banks have chosen to prohibit them. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, again, uh, the uh, Eric, I believe it was Eric Holder, mm -hmm. the uh, Obama administration started some kind of policy or, or tried to implement some kind of policy where they were going to choke us off from the banking yeah. system. Yeah, what was that uh, called? Um, Operation yeah. Choke Point. Choke Point. Yeah. Circa 2012, point, yeah. 2013. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I, you know, I was luckily not swept up into that, and I work with a regional bank out here, and they are, you know, in, you know, all full disclosure, you know, they know exactly what I do, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, it's I have to I have to seek those kind of um, uh, businesses out, you know, to, to you know because otherwise, you know, and it's happened about three times to me where all of a sudden the policies will change or they'll just be pulled out of the blue mm -hmm. 
and my credit card processing is gone and then mm -hmm. that's my cash flow so yeah i can give you guys uh, another example after i initially met rob or i get i don't know if we met this is actually the first time we're seeing each other we spoke over the phone but there's a there's a company that i do a lot of stuff with andrews uh custom leather he makes uh, holsters, leather belts, and things like that, right? Uh, and they use some exotic leathers, etc. So he's been doing business for 40 years, uh, you know, making people make orders online and stuff like that. Someone at the bank realized that he deals in leather, and they said, how do we know this guy's not getting illegal leathers? And they literally <laughs> froze his account and then didn't tell him. <laughs> So thank you. The Lacey Act Amendments of 2008. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this. How do you know you get to go it? I mean, they all look the same, right? I yeah. mean, they don't stop the beams or any of these guys. That, yeah. That's that's such bull crap. Yeah, uh, it's it's a nightmare that's happening out there. So I think this is the reason to simplify it for you all. This is the reason why we're talking about the money side of it. There's social media and stuff like that. We'll talk about later. But this is a way they could cut us off and make it impossible for us to be able to do business with, you, with each other. And, and we're talking here about stuff uh, that's guaranteed in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and the Constitution is just a, 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 a codification of pre-existing rights. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, and, and, and th this, this is just an extension of the bureaucracy that then goes into the private sector. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so let's say we realize that now. What are we doing i know steve you're doing stuff and, and and i know rob you're doing things what are we doing what should we we be doing about this well who do you, you want to go steve or no go ahead I've, yeah I've, i'm using up all well, the air no well, no not I, I, I would like to say i don't know if you guys saw the I, there's a lot of announcements that have happened yesterday and today i don't know if you saw the uh the listing of the advisors to the biden campaign now mm -hmm. on the different agencies and it's all silicon valley people mm -hmm. facebook google all of them literally have advisors to the president so mm -hmm. if you if and that if there's this thing called quid pro quo as they say um, and if, if if it's not obvious enough during the election, it's pretty obviously now after the election that Silicon Valley um, certainly is biased and definitely politically biased in one direction. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's important to know because we've never been at this level before where corporations now are super political animals mm -hmm. um, to the level that they are, not only to the point where they maybe just, you know, they maybe don't, maybe it used to be like the CEO would donate some money to a candidate he liked, or maybe they'd hire a lobbyist, but now we literally have, you know, especially not only banks becoming activists, but social media platforms, which are absolutely influencing mm -hmm. um, people's perceptions. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a very dangerous thing right now because they are these third party gatekeepers. Uh, and um, the banks have been doing it, as we mentioned before, you know, since Operation Choke Point for, you know, eight years now, where they're also picking and choosing who the winners and losers are in mm -hmm. transactions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, as you, you know, broke the story with, you know, John Crump yesterday about, you know, the ATF is, is going to be going after certain things with this current administration. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, you know, they're going to go after certain features, obviously. And accessories, but you know, I have a feeling they're gonna. I think they're gonna revive the zombie of Operation Choke Point, mm -hmm. and so I think on both sides, I think there's these decentralized technologies, whether it's for social media um, and you know for payments. But what that means, what are decentralized technologies? So um, I've talked to a lot of retailers like Steve, especially when before we ever even started coding Tusk, and to find out what their problems were in the industry. We had a good idea, but we wanted to really hear firsthand before we started building something what what people needed mm -hmm. um and, and what we kind of found out is you know there's a whole lot of ways that you know people are getting hammered out there um <clears throat> because of middlemen and what i like to say a decentralized technology is so for instance if you wanted to accept bitcoin or tusk for payment as a retailer you know i'm a co-founder i don't own tusk there's no you know i don't own tusk there's not a company here it's a decentralized project anybody can participate um, and a decentralized project is somewhere between like a nonprofit and a co-op is, I guess, the best way to describe it, because it's like a new thing. Decisions about how that that network are made on the gov on governance are done via voting on a blockchain um, through a proposal process. 
it's all done on software and software that everybody can look at and read and, and see what's going on. And so I always like to tell retailers that, you know, using and accepting, for instance, for payments, decentralized cryptocurrencies, you're pulling out the middlemen between you and your customer. So right now, if you're using a third party payment provider, it's going through a whole myriad of third party banks that are settling between one another, that dollar transaction. And and every time you have a bunch of middlemen in the middle of things, those middlemen can stop things, mm-hmm. um, whether it's political or otherwise. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you accept Tusk, for instance, uh, as a payment or even Bitcoin as a payment, no one can shut you down. Mm-hmm. Okay. No one can stop you. If, if I If I hated you, Hank, and I don't hate you, but what if I say I hated you and I said, I don't want anybody using Tusk to buy those stinky patches on his website. Uh-huh, thank you know, you. <laughs> I, there's no way I could stop. It. Right. There's right. nothing, there's nothing in the software that mm-hmm. could prevent that transaction from going mm-hmm. through. And so that's the difference. And, and decentralized cryptocurrencies are essentially an insurance policy against being deplatformed and debanked on, on the payment side. Now, there's a lot of other benefits for using Tusk that we could get into later. Uh, mm-hmm. the, economically, it's still better than cre- credit cards on top of that. It's cheaper mm-hmm. and faster and things. Mm-hmm. But the key is you can't be stopped by a political activist bank yeah. or a meddlesome politician that may hate what you do for a living. And that's the difference between credit cards and centralized credit cards and centralized banking and decentralized cryptocurrencies for payments. Okay, so um, so Steve, you know, I think that like what we all realize, these are end runs that they're trying to do, right? On the constitution Correct. and all that, and and they're like, okay, well, this is how we could cut it off. We can't get them here. We get them there. How how did you, what was your thought process on this? And how did you you know how did you decide to incorporate this into your business? Um, and and how is it working for you? Uh, so out of the many uh, tens of thousands of transactions, you know, we have had maybe some, uh, you know, dozens of transactions. So it's a very, very small amount of, uh, of, of our, uh, you know, transactions over many years that, you know, people actually use it. And I think that's because all these uh, notions that we've discussed are, are good and, and they are valuable, but there is a barrier to getting into uh this and it's a technological barrier and it's also um uh a a, a, like a risk preference kind of barrier Mm -hmm. so what you're doing is when you're taking out the middlemen and all these counterparties you're assuming all the risk for holding and then using it correctly and and i'm I'm referring to the cryptocurrencies here Mm -hmm. um and so that's a that that's a learning curve you know that's it's fairly steep uh if you are just you know a casual user of technology Mm -hmm. um in a former life i you know former manufacturing life another business i used to make um uh in institutional computer parts and indirect liquid cooling systems for server farms. Okay. So I actually, I was proximate to the computer industry. So when I saw in 2009, actually I saw it in 2010, I wasn't that early of an adopter, but I, what attracted me to it was the fact that it's permissionless and it's immutable. Mm-hmm. So immu- immutable means you can't alter the transaction. So if you make one, even if it's an error, mm-hmm. uh, you can't undo it. And mm-hmm. so a lot of folks have to get their head around that. Um, and, and like what Rob was saying, you know, about, uh, you know, censor censoring or deplatforming or interfering, mm-hmm. you know, materially with your, with your business and your transactions, that is a benefit, uh, you know, to, to be able to prevent that. But mm-hmm. then <clears throat> you also have to take responsibility. And, you know, I remember, uh, 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 a Catholic friend telling me how bad free will sucks <laughs> because it puts the responsibility on you, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, where yeah, it should I think be there's, there's the, for adoption, for adoption. Sake, right. Yeah. You know, there's there has to be, you know, there, it's going to it's still going to be a very long time, I think, before we get this. And mm-hmm. the the the, the uh, trailblazers like Rob and, and, and others, you know, I think are, are definitely moving us towards that goal. Yeah, so what do we, it sounds like we're, you know, um, is it adoption, I guess? Is, is that a good word? That's the problem? Well, like right now, you can go down to the bank, right? Open mm-hmm. up a bank account, mm-hmm. <clears throat> take the paper and metal you have in your pocket, deposit it, 
use a debit card and you know mm-hmm. so the friction is a little bit lower mm-hmm. and and I, I use the word friction i guess because it's just so highly available right mm-hmm. there's banks everywhere there's atms everywhere mm-hmm. and then these little mm-hmm. plastic cards that are antiquated or mm-hmm. in your wallet <clears throat> everybody's used to it but this notion of a you know a asymmetric encrypted unit of value yeah it's so <laughs> scary <carries> <laughs> yeah and, and we've it, seen it, horror stories like what happened to rich <laughs> you know right yeah and, you know, then, then the fact that the coin, the Bitcoin, doesn't exist in the mm-hmm. physical world necessarily. It's electrons and mm-hmm. in a very specific order. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is, you know, I think that's the, the, the biggest impediment. And so it's like, you know, because I, I don't know how many times I've had a conversation with just friends, casual, you know, and they ask, well, how can I get into Bitcoin? I explain it to them. It's like next topic. You know, they're they're even just the acquisition of it. Of course, mm-hmm. I don't want to sell mine, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know. Uh, the acquisition of it is very, um, uh, it's protracted. Okay. So once you, so you're saying once you try to explain, that's where you lose them or? Uh, basically because they're, they're okay. <clears throat> so the, in order to convert like a dollar into, into some, into some amount of Bitcoin, face to face transactions are a little bit, um, th- I mean, they're, they're the easiest way and that's, mm-hmm. that's how I have done it. And, and mm-hmm. then of course I accumulate it through. Um, my business, but again, on a very, very low scale. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the, what Rob is doing in terms of making this, this, this system that, you know, is a plug and play system for websites, you know, and e-commerce, I think that is going to move things, uh, much quicker, uh, because when somebody goes and sells a holster mm-hmm. and they have the option of somebody paying, in, in, a, in a cryptocurrency or Tusk in this case, I think that is the way that's going to drive adoption because then once they have that value, once they have that unit of account, mm-hmm. they're going to look to spend it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause that, that's what money is. It's the most saleable product. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, it, and, but, but it has, you have to also have the component that you're going to be able to use it again. Otherwise it has no value. Okay. So if all transactions were to stop, if mm-hmm. all commerce were to stop, value of money would go to zero. Mm -hmm. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.